Good morning, good morning. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we're, we're going to, uh, to respect your time, we're going to go ahead and uh, with the speaking. Uh, but if you uh, would like some more food, please help yourself. We closed the door, but they left the food out there uh, just for, uh, for sound acoustical uh, reasons. But uh, the food is out there. Please help yourself. And uh, how about the culinary arts uh, students and program? They do a super job. Yeah. So we're so happy uh, uh, that you could make it in this cold. Uh, it's not often that we see the pond uh, frozen solid, uh, so we might go ice skating later if you'd like. Um, I would like to uh, make a few uh, introductions if I could, uh, although most of you, you all know each other, I think, but um, uh, from uh, Senator Mark Montigny's office is Mike Murray, Mike Murray. S Senator Michael Rodericks is here, there's Senator Roderick. Representative Tony Cabral, there he is, there he is. Representative Pat Haddad, there she is. Representative Steve Howitt, Steve, there he is. From Representative uh, uh, Robert Cazero's office is Kevin Botello, Kevin. From Rep. Chris Markey's office is Jason Wentworth. Jason, there's Jason. <laughs> Representative Elizabeth Poyer, there she is. <laughs> All the way from Attleboro. Unfortunately, Representative Barrow's uh, dad is a little ill and he couldn't make it. He planned to be here uh, and sends his uh, greetings and his apologies. Uh, Representative Alan Sylvia, Alan. Representative Carol Fiola, there she is. We have from Congressman William Keating's office, Glenda is, is a queer, as a queer. I'm sorry, I say it wrong. There's Glenda. From Representative Joseph Kennedy's office, Stephanie Nagaro. There's Stephanie. And from Senator Edward Markey's office, Christina Pacheco. Christina. I would like also to recognize the Board of Trustees uh, members who are here. Uh, uh, Max Volterra, Max Volterra. Yeah. Diane Sylvia, Diane Sylvia. Yeah. Anthony Sapienza, Tony Sapienza, there he is. Joseph Marshall, Joseph Marshall, there he is. Uh, Jim Grady, James Grady, there we go. And last but not least, the chair of our Board of Trustees, uh, who I'd like to invite uh, to come up and say a few words of welcome, Fernando Garcia, chair of our Board of Trustees. <laughs> Fernando, you want to, uh, Fernando, would you say a few words? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Jack asked me to make sure that I do practice the three B's of public speaking. Be brief, be funny, and be gone. <laughs> but listen, as I look around this room, I, I, there's a lot of people that I want to thank. I want to thank, for instance, as the good president mentioned, a wonderful board of trustees that uh, we are second to none. We've got some good things. We had some great accomplishments as, as a whole, as a group uh, last year. And this year we have some individual projects that we're going to concentrate on. We have to stay alert because, you know, BCC is definitely on the move. I want to thank, for instance, you know, the great staff and administration. You know, sometimes he's very humble, but I tell you, I've traveled a lot since being chair and, and all that, and I find no one better than our Jack Spray. <laughs> you 
He definitely has a very uh, different style of uh, leadership, which is simply wonderful. Yeah. He empowers you, and then he expects you to do your job. Okay, And you, knowing his mission, knowing how hard he works, will do anything not to disappoint him. And, you know, and as a group, he has some wonderful, wonderful people. And lastly, I want to thank the state legislators that are here. We can keep the, the train going. We can choo-choo down the road. You know, we can do that greatest uh, conductor and all that. But you have to keep the wheels oiled. It takes money. It takes a budget. It takes people that actually care about this institution, but most important, care about students. That's the end product. We run a thing that we don't want everybody to be a doctor. We want people to be practical. We want to give them that jump start, you know, which is something that uh, then they can transfer and go to another thing. We're always being innovative. Uh, the lovely uh, Liz McCarthy, uh, I, I, you, I don't know if you're all aware, but April 5th, Tavars is coming in to do a concert, a benefit concert, so that we can establish a scholarship for Cape Verdean students that so much need some help. So that is very nice. In whole, it's just a wonderful institution, you know, even amongst the, uh, the other community colleges. And I think that at this time, in this particular area, we want to take our, our task very serious and move it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Fernando, and uh, we're very appreciative of his leadership of our Board of Trustees, and uh, it's going very, very well, things at the college, and he was right about the wonderful people that we have in our BCC family that all make it come together. Uh, I also want to recognize Representative Paul Schmidt. Paul, congratulations. Thank you for coming. That's all right. Milking, milking duties come first, huh? <laughs> well, we're going to uh, begin, if it's all right with you. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. And I think, Joe, I think you're in the way. <laughs> no, can't be. There we go. That was you. <laughs> well, we thank the great and uh, general court for your outstanding support. Uh, BCC has risen to uh, some wonderful heights, but uh, would not have been possible without your spectacular support. Uh, and <clears throat> I think I need to say also that uh, whether it, uh, Dem there are Democrats and Republicans in this room, and one thing uh, that uh, will bring, uh, bring them all together is education and uh, BCC. So, uh, you know, we're very grateful for all of your support uh, for education, which is a nonpartisan issue, right? A bipartisan issue. Well, uh, we have, a, 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 maybe, we have an agenda for you. Oh, it is not working very well. Okay, uh, and uh, that was brief. That was very brief. yeah, that was. Uh oh, yeah, <laughs> you have to move around the. Uh oh, it worked okay when we tested it. Oh, okay. I keep going skipping. Well, there we go. All right. There's our agenda, if you will. And uh, we'll try to uh, roll through these items for you. Um, and first, uh, the first shall be first, and uh, that is the, the budget. Uh, so our request, uh, please, please, please support the uh, funding formula, uh, which redresses a great deal of historical inequities uh, for Bristol and for some of the other uh, few community colleges. And it rewards also uh, uh, BCC's high performance. The funding formula, I'll get into in a second, but 
is 50 percent uh, for uh, historical inequities to, to redress and 50 percent for performance. Uh, and in both cases, uh, Bristol is at the top of these, uh, of these important issues. Um, also, uh, I'll get to the formula in a second, but I did want to mention to you the performance, speaking of performance, the performance incentive funds uh, in which there are metrics and accountability. You've all heard about assessment and accountability. I've always said, you know, the public money is a public trust and we have to be accountable for what we do with each public dollar that we receive. Uh, and uh, uh, we tie our goals and objectives to the vision project and the BCC strategic plan. And then a little bit later, I'll talk about the uh, capital bond bill as well. Um, uh, the, percentage, the performance incentive funds, so you know in our budget request, um, had been, has been now reduced by $5.5 million by the governor. Uh, it had been seven um, uh, or eight uh, million, and now it's down to 2.5. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the key element for, from your point of view, if you appropriate money, how is it being used? And uh, the performance incentive, uh, go, the grants and the funds go to high performing institutions, public high institutions. So uh, uh, Bristol received two uh, this year because of different, uh, because of the great things we're doing. Uh, so we want to keep that uh, alive if we can. Uh, uh, the governor uh, very strong about uh, performance and accountability. Uh, uh, inex inexplicably to me uh, that, that this got cut but uh, or reduced but uh, please please uh, keep track of, uh, of that and then I'll have a little bit more to talk about the uh, the bond bill uh, in a second now the formula funding this is a list uh, uh, this was the pre formula you can see that uh, uh, Bristol uh, was at scheduled for 13 8 and with the post formula getting the formula the formula has made a difference, quite a significant difference for Bristol. Uh, Bristol Community College received something on the order of 22% increase, which is unheard of in this day and age, right? Who gets that? Uh, but it, it, I think it uh, does two things. It demonstrates the quality uh, of uh, Bristol Community College. Uh, uh, it demonstrates the uh, uh, historical inequities. Well, every time we meet every year at this time, I'm always uh, whining and uh, moaning to you about how we're at the bottom of the barrel uh, in terms of the appropriation uh, per FTE. We're third in appropriate. We're third in enrollment and last uh, in appropriation. Uh, so you can see the significant difference that the uh, that the formula has made. But even at 22 um, uh, percent, at uh, pre-formula we were at $2,397 per student. And even with the formula, 22%, who gets 22%? And you can see it barely moved the needle. We, we're still below 3,000 per student. Uh, so it's a, you know, a significant way to go. These are hardened inequities that need to be stubbornly resisted. Uh, they stubbornly resist uh, 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 remediation, if you will. So we, I urge you, uh, please, please, please support uh, the formula funding. Uh, we had two million, uh, I'm sorry, 2.9 million, almost $3 million uh, in the difference. So what did we do with that money? Uh, which is, the, you know, absolutely a legitimate question to ask. Uh, we hired 10 full-time faculty. We uh, used the formula to implement, the, uh, the formula money, to implement the commissioner's vision project in closing achievement gaps, strengthening developmental English and math courses. This is something that you should, um, uh, you know about and you really uh, will be paying attention to uh, from in Boston. Developmental education is a uh, embarrassment in my view uh, for, the, uh, uh, for the state. On the other hand, it's a jewel of what we do in our mission. This is what community colleges do and rather than slam the window down on people's uh, fingers and say we're closed to you, we have an open door and we invite everyone to come and we're accessible and affordable and we provide this opportunity at a high quality education. So uh, uh, developmental English and mathematics, uh, our Vice President Greg Satharis, uh, our Chief Academic Officer has taken great measures to move forward uh, uh, new and improved ways to 
consolidate and uh, strength, further strengthen our developmental offerings as a key part of what we do. We're not embarrassed by it at all. We like what we're doing. People come to us, and where else are they going to go? Uh, it's going to, they're, they're going to represent a social cost if we close that window on them, right? Uh, so let's make them productive citizens and get them going. But what does that do? That sometimes uh, requires more than one semester in developmental education. And then uh, we, community colleges, get hit over the head why students don't graduate in two years after they, after they uh, uh, enroll at Bristol Community College. And that's, you know, that to me is not fair. We're doing what we're supposed to do and we're helping the Commonwealth and we're getting beat over the head by, I just have to men mention to you, the Boston Foundation a couple years ago in, uh, in that crisis. And what was, uh, and the mayor of a big city, uh, a big capital city was saying, uh, about our graduation rates, and they, oh, you know, I just met, some, I met him on the street one day, and he said, oh, you're great, I'm from Bristol Community, he said, oh, your graduation rates are awful, you know, I mean, what, what kind of thing is that to have in your mind about community colleges? We're doing great work uh, by doing this, so, so that's just one of the uh, uh, many things that we did with the extra 2.9 million dollars. We have in implemented also outcomes assessment, and that gets to assessment accountability, those are words that you live by in Boston and we live by uh, uh, on the campuses. Uh, we have increased uh, f uh, student financial aid scholarships. You know, the uh, soaring costs of uh, education, uh, we have remained af affordable for our students. Expanding STEM offerings, I'll talk a little bit more about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, the key to the future and future uh, jobs for many of our students. Um, and fees have remained level. The trustees uh, uh, control the uh, uh, fee, student fees at the college, and we have had zero uh, input. You, you may recall that there was a deal because of the formula that the colleges would, uh, would uh, uh, hold fees uh, flat, but no increase. But I we do want to point out to you that Bristol, before that deal was made, Bristol trustees decided that there would be no fee increase and made that very clear in our commitment to our students. So, so for two years, uh, and uh, no matter what happens this year, uh, I know that you've heard a lot of talk about uh, a bargain and uh, uh, a demand that the fees be kept, uh, uh, be kept level, and uh, Bristol will do that no matter what. So uh, you know, I want you to be assured that we've got the students in, in our best interest in our, in our uh, uppermost for us. And we've uh, enabled us, the formula has enabled us to improve or work on, completing, on completion rates uh, through degrees, certificates, and transfers. Uh, so it's been quite, a, um, it's been quite a, a good thing. We built a brand new advising center on this campus with the extra money. We built a brand new student success center, student support services on this campus. We hope to do it uh, in future form formula years uh, in Attleboro and New Bedford. Uh, and uh, we are uh, strengthening our advising. We, bought, we uh, hired advisors, uh, and we really have moved on. Despite that, despite who gets 22%, I will tell you that we still, we still had to dip into our reserve uh, this, this year, this year that we're in. That's where that money comes from. So uh, uh, there is a, you know, it's a long way to go, uh, but each formula year, uh, and the, Commissioner has referred to the formula each year as a down payment. It's a continuing thing. I don't know where you're going to come up with $20 million every year, $20 new million. Uh, uh, but uh, but that's, uh, uh, that's part of the uh, uh, strength of, uh, of the public higher education system. And why, why does the formula, maybe not, why does the formula matter? Uh, we have been able, as I said, freeze uh, fees, we've, and we've strengthened our financial aid to our students and more full-time faculty, and more full-time support staff. Uh, it, it's recognized, I know faculty get a lot of attention and they deserve it, uh, that we need more and more full-time faculty positions, but the professional staff is also very important, that the students, uh, when we open uh, uh, and bring in the enrollment increases that we've had, we, we must, uh, uh, provide uh, the students with the tools for victory, that I call them. They must have the tools for success, and that's the academic support uh, uh, services. 
And to further strengthen this great institution, um, BCC is a high performing, that uh, it, uh, we're so high performing, consider these few illustrative uh, uh, metrics, okay? Maybe, there we go. Um, since I arrived after the fall of 99, uh, our enrollment increase has in, been 85%, 85% uh, our student enrollment. The faculty, full-time faculty, we've increased uh, by over 40%. Minority employee increase, full-time now, 156%. Student minority enrollment, 303%. They now, uh, minority students represent 20% uh, of our record enrollment. So it's really been quite a, uh, quite a ride. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you have 85% uh, enrollment, that's why I talked about those support services and more full-time faculty. They all go together. Uh, uh, we have 12,000 annual students annually, uh, which is larger than any institution you can name in Southeastern Mass. I won't name any. <laughs> but uh, we're the largest in Southeastern Mass. We're the third, I think I keep telling you, we're the third in, uh, in the state of the 15 community colleges. Uh, Massas uh, I'm sorry, not Massasoit, uh, Bunker Hill and Middlesex are the top two, and uh, little old Bristol is number three, okay? Um, so these are some metrics for you to consider. Uh, these are in your packet. Uh, now the capital bond bill. Uh, we, uh, we, we have a great deal of uh, need for space, as you can imagine with that growth. Um, right now, uh, the total in the bond bill uh, was for Bristol Community College was $71 million, which is more than any community college uh, had in the bond bill ten, eight years ago now uh, that, the, uh, that the governor uh, pushed this and you approved it. Uh, the the uh, first fruits are coming to bear now uh, that on either next month or the month after we will break ground on the Fall River campus. Uh, as well as modern, uh, which would include not only a new building, but the modernization of a couple of other buildings at the, uh, on this campus. Then, uh, with great news, uh, we received uh, recently, we are now on the, um, on the table, if you will. We've been approved uh, to move forward. It's a long queue that's behind us, but we've been approved to move forward with the planning for a $20 million New Bedford campus, downtown New Bedford, and a $4.5 million, uh, I think, is going to be a new campus or a building that we could uh, purchase in Attleboro, but that's not decided yet. That's what the planning is for. Uh, yeah, so, so it's great news uh, for New Bedford and great news for Attleboro, as well as the building uh, that we're going to have uh, here. Um, I have a, uh, written and, uh, uh, to Commissioner Richard Freeland, uh, Department of Higher Ed, and requested that this time, 2016, be accelerated uh, and backed off, if you will, to, can you accelerate and back off? I don't know. But uh, back to two, two, 2015 and uh, see if we can get the planning uh, going uh, with 2015. And uh, for the representatives and senators uh, from these two areas, New Bedford and uh, Attleboro, we'll be working with your offices about, uh, about the process and uh, moving forward uh, with, uh, identifying the planning of what will be in there. Then the next year comes a program design. These are the actual programs that we're going to be offering. And then uh, hopefully we'll break ground right after that. Uh, I did want to also mention um, in our budget request uh, and with this capital bond that, that you should know uh, that uh, we, uh, you should have your reassurances, uh, be reassured about our efficiency that this is very important. I know you may have heard uh, uh, talk. You know, at, at this campus, I always uh, uh, criticize the water bubblers that are on the campus. I'm trying to, I threaten to take them out because there's so much gossip and uh, false information that goes around the water bubblers. And I think the same thing might be true of the State House, uh, where you hear some things that, uh, that uh, you know, the, the colleges have enough money, they're just not efficiently using it, and uh, they ought to ring efficiencies out of their budgets now before they ask for more money. So I did want to kind of reassure you quickly, and I can give you more details uh, privately, but uh, uh, we have a, I'm, a, I'm a, a member of the task, statewide task force on PACE. PACE is a partnership to 
uh, advance uh, collaborative efficiencies, collaboration and efficiencies. So PACE, uh, I'm one of uh, six uh, presidents, uh, three state universities and three community college presidents uh, working on PACE and, and to, it is to be sure that we're as efficient as we can and that through group purchasing and things like that, that we can enact some savings. <clears throat> Uh, so, some, just briefly, some of the topics that we're looking at, information technology, uh, those are horrendous costs, uh, they're very expensive. Uh, bookstore uh, work, maybe collaboration on bookstore and te textbooks are outrageous. I'm sure you hear from your constituents about, you know, I hear from our students, and they're right. I mean, it's outrageous, the price of, book, of bookstore, of um, textbooks. Energy, we've made great inroads in, in uh, energy and efficiency and uh, you should know uh, uh, about that we're doing that. Uh, we have uh, maybe auditors uh, coming in. We have group auditors where we can do um, uh, collaborative efforts with them. Um, uh, credit card services, banking, procurement. When we stand together, the 15 community colleges and the nine state universities, uh, we're, we're, a, we're a considerable purchaser and we can uh, you know, kind of leverage that. Uh, so. So I wanted you to be sure that you knew on the campus, inside the campus, as well as the 15 community colleges, we're ringing all we can out. Uh, and uh, as I keep saying, you know, public money is a public trust. So we want you to be assured that every dollar that we're, uh, we receive is well spent. And, and really, in one way or another, goes to what I always say is the main thing. Main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And our main thing is student success. So it, in one way or another, it goes to academic learning and students. And I'm delighted to report that the Fall River Project uh, on, our, on our bond bill is moving forward. It's a uh, health and technology building. And the goal, speaking of ringing uh, savings out, the goal is to be uh, net zero uh, uh, <coughs> geothermal and solar technologies. Uh, this means that it'll produce more energy than it consumes uh, by incorporating these uh, geothermal and solar technologies and the efficient design of the building. So uh, uh, we're looking for LEED certification uh, on this building. Uh, uh, so I want you to know it will enhance our already beautiful uh, campus uh, here. And this is a, a rendering of it. It's really, it's gonna be located uh, uh, out on just near the entrance of the college. So it'll be a welcoming uh, uh, tower, if you will, uh, uh, a very significant welcome uh, as people come on the campus. Uh, the, what will be in the building, uh, the groundbreaking is set for this spring. Uh, uh, programs, uh, nursing and dental hygiene and clinical lab science, other health programs, and uh, of course the very expensive biology uh, chemistry lab labs, those are very expensive to build. Uh, so we're gonna have brand new uh, uh, labs for our students and uh, to complement not only uh, the health programs, but of course our other programs that require sciences and uh, technology, okay? So it's, we're very excited about this. And all this space is badly needed uh, with the growth that we had. So I don't know if you can read that, but uh, we begin to move in on everybody. <laughs> I wanted to show a slide of Hollywood Squares, you know, where we might have people uh, climbing up the ladder uh, on top of one another. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Another request that we have in the budget is if you could uh, preserve dual enrollment. Uh, dual enrollment is, uh, uh, I think you know what it is, but it involves, <clears throat> excuse me, involves high school students and GED students and homeschoolers who uh, simultaneously, concurrently take courses uh, at their venue, where it may be home or uh, Durfee High School or New Bedford High School, wherever it is, uh, as well as uh, at Bristol Community College. And, uh, and what they do is they get credit, dual credit for the same course, uh, college credit and high school graduation credit, uh, or GED credit, or uh, uh, home, home school credit. So this is terrific, you know, it's really a great, great program. Um, now, uh, $2 million was in the request for the state uh, from the Commissioner of Higher Education 
Now, inexplicably, again, the governor, of course, he's got a lot of money to, I mean, he's got a lot of decisions to make, uh, it was reduced to 730000 But I'm sure you will hear from your constituent parents about, you know, it's catching on more and more as those prices go soaring uh, for uh, uh, baccalaureate uh, institutions. Uh, you will find that parents want to be savvy about saving money. And if, if, you, are, uh, and if you are savvy, <clears throat> the, your junior year in high school, the next summer, uh, and your senior year and the following summer, and maybe even the summer before your junior year, you could accumulate up to a year, uh, maybe even more, of, um, of college credit. And that, at some, depending on the school that you go to, the college and university that you go to, yeah, that's fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 that you've saved. So the parents are going to be ringing your bell, uh, your, your phone, your doorbell, about uh, let's increase dual enrollment. Um, it is a fabulous uh, uh, way to uh, for, uh, accumulate uh, college credit. You hear a lot about AP courses in high school. But they're not, and they're wonderful, and we're not trying to step on them, but they're not guaranteed college credit. This is guaranteed college credit. It is a college credit course that you're taking. So uh, I think you'll find that uh, uh, it, this, this 730,000 will be divided by 24 campuses, the, the nine state universities and the 15 community colleges. And uh, so that brings Bristol down to about uh, $30,000, okay, for what we... And, and, and I want to show you, uh, keep in mind not $30,000, but maybe I can show you. Maybe not. There we go. This is the, these are the, uh, this is the history of uh, dual enrollment at BCC. It only started back in uh, 09, or late 09. And we have had uh, over 3,100 students total uh, coming, uh, coming to Bristol in one way or another and uh, in dual enrollment. And you can see that, the, that it is growing every uh, spring, uh, spring 462. Summer, of course, is, is quiet, but the uh, fall went up and then the spring, uh, another huge jump. So um, it's growing and um, I think that uh, the figure for Bristol of uh, uh, what about thirty thousand dollars compared to thirty one? You know, well, four hundred and fifty one uh, in any one semester. I mean, that doesn't go very far. Yeah. And frankly, we have had. I mentioned to you that we've got, uh, but you know, we're we're not uh, well we're well situated in terms of the appropriation. When it first happened, I uh, uh, proved that the that oh first course is free in dual enrollment. Okay, so. Uh, when, I, when we first started, I agreed that the second course would be free. And that, you know, people did come in, but it cost the college. We had to eat those, uh, those fees. Uh, and so uh, we modified it somewhat in that we reduced the price. It was a reduced price, the second course. First one's free, second one was reduced, but now I'm, I'm sorry to say we can't uh, financially afford that any longer. So the first one is still free. But after that, uh, they have to pay a full price, which is still a bargain, but uh, not as much of a bargain as we'd like it to be. Okay, so uh, dual enrollment, if you could, uh, uh, we're asking that you restore uh, the funds, uh, frankly, um, uh, the two million uh, that was originally requested is not enough. I mean, you, you, you get that in every, in every request, is never enough. But two million compared to, uh, uh, what the governor slashed it to. Uh, I hope that you can restore that. Okay, another request we have for you is the, uh, with regard to the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. Um, we are looking for, and I've been looking for this since 9-11, the original 9-11, and uh, just recently now with uh, the Boston Marathon Massacre in Newtown, Connecticut, and well, we have considerably strengthened our preparedness planning. And what we have discovered, and we discover this every time it snows in the middle of the day and we, can't, and we close the school, it takes two hours to get out of this back uh, parking lot uh, because everything is lined up. And especially if Durfee and Connolly close at the same time, Ellsbury Street is uh, just, uh, you know, doesn't move. Uh, so 
uh, imagine an emergency now. So uh, what we are asking for is emergency only, although maybe we could make it permanent, uh, but I doubt that would happen. But uh, all we're asking for is emergency only, exit on to 24 out this way. You parked in the parking lot, uh, you can get out uh, Route 24 and get off the campus. The important thing is the expeditious evacuation uh, of the campus, and that's just not happening. And uh, believe me, I have seen in other settings panic, and you don't want to deal with uh, 12,000 students and you know 1,400 uh, employees all heading uh, for an exit in panic. I mean, it's just a disaster. So um, I think that it's possible uh, to arrange this route, uh, route 24, exit onto Route 24 so that we have kind of two uh, uh, exits for, for the college. Um, we need your help. We will set, we'll be glad to help set up the appointments. Uh, the Regional Department of Transportation and the Secretary of Transportation, uh, Richard Davey. We're glad to help you, uh, uh, any help we can provide you, okay? We're very glad to help. And the second thing about, uh, uh, about transportation, if you will, would be signage for BCC. If you travel uh, 495 and 195 uh, and 95, you see st signs for the various, co community, uh, various colleges, not just community colleges, but colleges and universities. And uh, now that we're firmly established in New Bedford and in Attleboro, uh, we think that uh, there, sh there should be state signs, uh, and we're going to talk to the mayors about local signs. But uh, I hope that uh, we, don't want, we don't want BCC to be a mystery. How do I find uh, where in Attleboro and New Bedford? Where are we? Uh, so I, I hope that uh, we could uh, ask and be glad to help you with any support uh, that we could provide to you. And... Um, we don't have a long list, but there is a, maybe there's no one, maybe there's not another request. <laughs> there we go, batteries, yeah. Uh, the STEM Starter Academy. Do you know, uh, uh, you know STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, this is a core area of uh, workforce development, employment. These are the, if you, you know, uh, math and uh, all of these majors uh, associated, not just those four fields, but all the associated majors that go with those fields, uh, that's where the jobs are going to be. That's where students have bright futures. Not that they don't have bright futures with a, a BCC degree in other areas, but um, uh, this is something. Now the starter, uh, the STEM Starter Academy uh, <clears throat> uh, has, been, uh, uh, has been eliminated have been eliminated in the, in the governor's uh, budget. And uh, uh, our goal is to increase the number of STEM graduates, which is, remember I showed you before, the Vision Project and the BCC uh, strategic plan inform our goals and efforts. And STEM graduates, uh, increasing STEM gra graduates is a major goal for us. Uh, so uh, it really was inexplicable that the money uh, was cut altogether, 4.75 million. Uh, was zeroed out. Uh, so uh, 300,000 uh, of that 4.75 was our share of the 29, uh, 24 uh, campuses. Uh, but uh, please, uh, uh, if you could uh, support STEM, I know you'll hear from your constituents about uh, STEM and the Vis Vi Vision Project. Um, and uh, we're, we're just glad to, uh, this was only a one year deal. Uh, I say last year, it's this year's budget, uh, uh, and next year it's zeroed out uh, in the proposal from the governor. Okay? And you should know about, uh, also, we want to thank you for this uh, uh, next item, maybe, maybe not. Well, there we go. Whoop. I want to thank you for that, yeah. <laughs> How about the student health, uh, stealth, student health insurance? Did you know, uh, maybe you don't know, you cannot register at uh, any public uh, institution without health insurance. And that's a shock to some students. And you know the cost of uh, various plans. So it's, uh, it was, uh, I get a lot of phone calls at the first part in August and, and September and January when classes are starting, student, new students coming in. What's going on? I can't register. And uh, it's because they don't have health. But one of the 
one of the uh, big roadblocks you've, you've effectively eliminated, and we thank you for that, and that is that Mass Health Connector now qualifies. I don't know why it didn't qualify before you did what you did this year, uh, but uh, as of last month, uh, it, does, it does qualify, and that has made a significant difference for our, uh, for our students. I'm so, uh, so grateful to you about that. It's something that people don't understand until they uh, try to sign up, and I hear from parents and from students about why their there's sons and daughters couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, uh, register. So you must have proof of insurance to register, and this enables many of our students to access a, a less expensive rates. You know, it's hard to talk about inexpensive health costs, right? But uh, this is less expensive, uh, and, uh, th and it is now an approved community college insurance provider, and it reduced from uh, something like the bill is something like $1,600 to $1,000, under $1,000. So it made a significant difference for the student. And some other wonderful news. We have, well, maybe I skipped it. There we go. Uh, in 2015, uh, next year we'll begin launching uh, uh, from the spring of 2015 to the next summer of 2016 will be our 50th anniversary. 50 years uh, uh, that uh, BCC has been in business serving the, <laughs> serving the country. Huh? Thank you. Uh, we have uh, co-chairs, we have a, a good deal of uh, projects involved, and uh, it, you'll be hearing much more about that as we move forward. And of course, that's uh, uh, it, no, no mean feat to be in business for 50 years and moving ahead. Now we also, uh, finally, I want to point out that we have the uh, NEASC accreditation, speaking of assessment and accountability. The NEASC accreditation uh, process every 10 years. Uh, we have a team visit us. It's a very formal effort. It took us two years to create and uh, uh, write a, uh, a, um, a uh, self-study, institutional self-study. And the visiting team will be here uh, later, uh, well, it's almost March, isn't it? Yeah, later this month, I was gonna say. And you know, almost true. So. Uh, and, and now, uh, you've heard enough from me, now's the time to hear from some of our most important products, our students, and uh, uh, I'd like to, uh, if I could, introduce to you Stanley Dale Hampton. Stanley, would you come up? And, uh, Stanley is a GED graduate and um, he is going to talk about his experience, and these are all moving, uh, moving uh, uh, stories for you to hear. Stanley, please help yourself. Let me get this out of your way. Oh, very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, my name is Stan Hampton. Um, I'm from Brockton. Well, I lived in Brockton for a while. Um, I went to, um, I recently, um, last year in April, I, uh, got, I started, uh, called up the BCC, uh, about getting uh, my GED. So um, I went from April, I got my GED in um, August. I went to step up to college in September. I'm a full-time student now here in the criminal justice program. It's really great. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you, it's, it's unbelievable how quick things can happen when you have the right chemistry and you do the right things. You know, I struggled all my life, you know. I was an abused child, but that didn't make me do things like get into drugs or anything like that, because I never was into that stuff. Um, I was a single father for 15 years with my kids. I took care of them. I have uh, two daughters that go, well, one goes here, my stepdaughter goes here to BCC, and my other daughter goes to Massasoit. So, um, it's kind of fun. It's, it's been a long ride, but I'm almost there, you know, and I'm, I'm doing good, and I really love this stuff. I could, <laughs> my wife's always like, ah, why don't you take a break? Why don't you take a break? And she's putting on my coat to get me out of the door. Just, you know, she knows I got to go. 
every day, every day. And I hear people that say, no. sometimes I hear people that are like, oh, I need to take a day off, I need to take a day off. And I say, well, if you take a day off, one day turns into another day, another day turns, it's too easy to take a day off. You know, it's, the, the hardest part about anything is taking the first step. And believe me, it's been, a, like I said, it's been a really rough road for me. I grew up in Brockton. I grew up, you know, around guys like, you know, uh, Marvin Hagler, he's a good, very good friend of mine, and Peter McNeely, you know, he lives up. They're very, we're really close people. But, you know, when you talk about a second chance, I, it reminds me of, like, when I was growing up, I played, I played hockey on my high school hockey team. I was a goalie. Uh, you know, it was 1998, a guy comes up over and he says, He's talking to a friend of mine, he says, Bill, we need a goalie for the night, could you play? Bill's like, ask Stan, he'll do it. He's like, Stanley, come on, I don't want to ask Stanley. Bill's like, no, ask Stanley, he'll do it. So he comes over, he goes, Stanley, all you got to do is stand there. He doesn't know that, you know, that Stan Hampton was really, really, very good. He goes, all you got to do, Stan, is just stand there. Don't worry about anything. He goes, I know you probably can't skate that good, but just... So I get all my stuff, I go over there. He goes, oh, where'd you rent all the stuff from? That quick. I'm thinking to myself, this guy just doesn't know. So we're playing the game, it just so happens that the rink set up, we just happen to have the wrong end. So I end's over there and, you know, the other end's over here and our bench is in the wrong, at the, the wrong place. You know, you usually get the bench closest to where you are, but we didn't. So we get in the game. And we're losing three to two, so at the end of the game, when it gets close to the end of the game, you know, they're going to pull the goalie. So the ref says, he goes and talks to the other team, he says, can Stan get on your bench because his bench is just too far? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. So he points. At the end of the, when the game, when the time comes, he points, he's like, go. So I go, and I'm skating as fast as I can. You know, you got to turn. When you turn and you jump up and you hit the bench, I fall over inside. We're losing three to two, and I'm really bummed out. I'm never going to get another chance. The game ends, and the guys are all having the greatest time in their lives. They're like, oh my God. I'm thinking to myself, we lost. What are you guys happy about? We usually lose like 15 to 1. I'm like, are you guys serious? He said, what are you doing next week? So when you talk about second chances, and obviously I played, and we won a lot of championships. So right now, uh, I'm, take, I'm taking my second chance at this, and this is what I really want to do, and I'm glad to be here. When Judy Garland sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow, I had to just imagine what she was thinking about. But now I'm at BCC, I'm at the top of that rainbow, and I can see everything that she's saying. So, thank you very much. It up. Thank you, Stanley. The, uh, the GED stories that we go, uh, uh, Joan uh, and I go to the graduations, and uh, they're just so moving, the stories, the obstacles that, uh, that the students, I know, a hardened old politician like Joan Menard uh, in a rough and tumble world, and she's bawling like a baby as I am, you know, at these stories. It's, they're just incredible. Uh, and so it's more than a second chance, and you're never going to get there, Stanley. There's no there. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. Uh, and now we have another student uh, for you, and that is uh, Kevin Newby. Kevin um, uh, is a student ambassador. I should point out, he's a star on our men's basketball team that just won the state championship. Uh, <clears throat> and. Uh, uh, they've just won the first round of the regional tournament, and this weekend they go to play for the championship up in Boston at, at Bunker Hill. So, Kevin Newby, ladies and gentlemen. I hope none of my professors are here, here grading me on this speech. But I, I would appreciate the extra credit. Being a college student, you always feel like you're being graded on everything. My background is in civil and human rights, and I will be speaking from this characteristic. I'm originally from Virginia, but I respected the North all my life. I'm a student in the paralegal program, but because I went between two degree programs, I will graduate with a general studies degree. I plan to continue my education in paralegals, public administration, political or social science. I'm a Phi Theta Kappa member, starting center, and captain of our state champion basketball team.
My experience at BCC has motivated me to get an education because I realized that education is universal. People from all circumstances have been oppressed by inadequate education. For me personally, BCC has allowed me the opportunity to promote my greenhouse ship concept. With this creation, I hope to feed dis disenfranchised people around the world and stabilize third world countries. BCC is a community within a community. Help is all, all along the way here. A drawback is that it is a two-year college and students come and go. Your new friend can be your best bud and a distant relative from one semester to the next. And for international students, this may be even harder. New clubs are just as hard to create here because of the turnover rate of students. When I first came to BCC, I was a homeless military veteran. And although the Commonwealth of Massachusetts denied me Chapter 115 benefits, I was able to attend Bristol Community College. Not only has BCC bestowed upon me edification, it has given me aptitude to be secure in my person. My military experience conveyed to me that humanity is, has a lot of ground to cover in order to create world peace. I was in Korea during 9-11, and although I was halfway around the world, I felt the pain. Fort Drum, my first duty station, cultivated me to take real world situations candidly. Some say, war, war is sweet to the inexperienced, though the experience know better. War does not define manhood or the might of a country. War is not a full-time job. War is the last alternative to earlier failed, earlier failed options. Terrorism is not just Al-Qaeda or the Ku Klux Klan. Terrorism is when you disparage the poor. BC, Bristol Community College is not USC, where you're neighbors with Hollywood. This is not Florida State, where you're in a tropical climate. This is a community where we're trying to change the world by, change the world by changing lives, learner by learner. By the sword, we seek peace. By peace, our, only under liberty. That's my speech. Thank you. Those are great stories, aren't they, from Stanley and Kevin. Uh, and now we would like to uh, have you hear from some of our BCC, uh, wonderful members of our BCC family. Uh, and we'll start off with our uh, uh, steward of our AFSME union, uh, Melanie Johnson. Melanie? <clears throat> and while Melanie's uh, coming up, I also want to introduce uh, Alti Hickey, who is a, uh, also a steward in the AFSME union. Alti? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I know. <laughs> Good morning. I would like to thank each of you for coming today and take this opportunity to welcome you to Bristol Community College. I am the Unit 1 steward for AFSCME 1067, <sighs> sorry, I get a little nervous, which represents the largest, the largest and fastest growing public services employees union. I have been a steward on this campus since 2002, and I am proud to say that I have been able to humbly serve in this capacity in the process, learning to be a better person, always to do better with each new, and learning to always to do better with each new experience. BCC has afforded me this opportunity, and for that I am grateful. I too was once a young student on this campus, nothing more than a GED in hand and some dreams. The more than 6,000 AFSCME members working at 27 public university, state, and community college campuses in Massachusetts make up the backbone of one of the most respected and effective public higher education systems in the world. AFSCME advocates for fairness in the workplace, excellent in public services, and prosperity and opportunity for all working families. We not only stand for fairness at the bargaining table, we fight for fairness in our communities and in the halls of government. With these words and my short time limit, I ask that you as well fight with us and continue to support BCC and its mission, which supports the larger community and social fabric that contains not only AFSCME employees, but each one of us striving for a better tomorrow today. Thank you very much. Sorry I was so nervous. <laughs> Melanie Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. And now we'd like to hear from some of our uh, members of the MC MCCC Union, the MCCC, the Mass Community College Council. Each of the 15 community colleges has a chapter 
Uh, and I'd like to first begin by introducing the president of our Bristol Community College chapter of MCCC, uh, Professor Diana Yowie. Professor Yowie. I'd like to thank uh, President Spraga for providing uh, this opportunity for me to briefly speak with all of you. So I'm limited to one of the three Bs, and that's being brief. On behalf of the full-time faculty, adjunct faculty, and professional staff of the Bristol chapter of the Massachusetts Community College Council, I want to thank all of you for your support uh, with the increased funding. Uh, and at the risk of sounding like an ungrateful child, <laughs> uh, I'd like to say we need more. <laughs> uh, and if the funds are earmarked, I would ask that we, that you would show support for faculty, uh, both full-time faculty and adjunct faculty. Education is a smart investment, and I can talk about that from firsthand experience. I was born into a family of six children uh, to parents who received an 11th grade education and an 8th grade education. I'm the only one in my immediate family who has graduated from high school and have since gone on and feel like I'm giving back being here teaching at the community college. Two of my siblings did go on for GEDs and one continued on for some community college education. Two of us are gainfully employed to the extent that we are able to financially support our own families without um, additional support uh, in that we're not dealing with minimum wage uh, positions. So again, education is a smart investment. And I'd like to end this part of uh, what I'm speaking about with a Chinese proverb, give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, and he eats for a lifetime. So invest in education. Before I leave, I want to just give a plug for the paralegal program. And um, Michael Rodericks has been a, a guest speaker in my classes in the past. And I would like to extend an invitation to all of you uh, who has some free time on a Monday between 9.30 and 12.15. If you'd like to be a guest speaker uh, uh, for my students, please just let me know. Thanks. <laughs> well, that was a shameless plug for her program, right? <laughs> we need, well, we need more lawyers, right? We need more lawyers. Uh, and now, uh, I mentioned uh, that uh, Diana is the uh, president of the local Bristol chapter, but we have another distinguished guest who is uh, on the, uh, vice president of the statewide uh, uh, board uh, of the MCCC and uh, our own uh, Donnie McGee. And I, I know that you have heard, uh, each of you have heard uh, many times from Donnie uh, as she patrols the state house. But uh, she's a tireless advocate for education and for the community colleges, and uh, we're so glad to have her. She's a strategic uh, officer, uh, planning officer for MCCC, and statewide vice president. That's, that's a considerable achievement. So please welcome uh, Professor Donnie McGee. <laughs> now I have a reputation to live up to. Um, it's always delightful to be here at a time when it is so important to talk about the connection between the work that we do and the funding that we need to continue that mission. I want to uh, also say that I have heard about the three Bs of good speakers, and I think it was a little bit different, but one similar emphasis. One, be brief. A second one was be honest, and the third was be wise. So I am going to, uh, I, I think I'm pretty good on the honesty part. I'm going to work on the brevity, and I'm going to try to build on the wisdom of the speakers who have come before me, including President Spraga. Uh, I apologize for these glasses. I have my prescription 
glasses in my car and I didn't want to run out. So every now and then I've been trying to check out what's being put up there so I can address that, maybe look at my notes and also figure out who it is to whom I am talking. But I, th I think the important thing is that, and we hear from the stories that the, the two students who spoke here, we are a beacon of hope and opportunity for everybody that we serve in the cities and towns that surround us. We're the last bastion of hope for many of those who would be on the sidelines if we didn't have Bristol Community College in its midst with the wonderful programs and partnerships that we have in the community. Our legislators, thank, we thank you because we know you have partnered with administrators, with educators, and with students who have the courage, confidence, and competence to speak up about what Bristol Community College does. Last year, you were so successful in giving us a 10% increase in the higher ed education funding that we so sorely needed. We've really been operating on a deficit over the last decade, and I think it's largely because of a variety of factors, not, not dismissing the recession, but also because higher ed funding is discretionary. And as a result, it's often the last that really gets dealt with seriously because there are so many competing important needs. What I would like to say is, as, as the uh, president has also emphasized, we need to continue to serve everybody, not the, just the middle class or the working class, but the underclass and all those who walk through our doors. And to do that, we need to have continued increased funding. The performance uh, funding grants are so key to the continuation of our mission. Uh, if we don't serve the people who are underprepared, they end up being a social cost, an economic cost. And we need good developmental educators. We need to have colleges affordable. We need to look at the over-reliance on part-time faculty because that also ends up being a problem in terms of even though we get faculty in here, we may not get the support services that these students need to really make it from their entry to completion. And I would also echo that some of the performance-based funding criteria and completion and retention rates are often unrealistic for students who come in. And if we close the door to them, we are not either serving our mission, we're not doing the ethical uh, things that we need to do to provide for a fair, just, and society, and one that is going to prepare our leaders and our workers for the future. So uh, one other thing that is, I think, also important, there's a higher ed commission that has been appointed. It's a task force as a result of last year's budget. And it's trying to look at a way to fund uh, our colleges in a more consistent and predictable uh, and adequate way so that we have a foundation budget and we don't have to fight so hard every year to get the funding that I think everybody in this room feels our colleges deserve. So please pay attention to that and uh, the chairs of the Higher Ed Committee, Senator Moore and Representative Santa Candro, are leading that task force. They're going to be making recommendations that will be, I think, put together in a report at the end of this uh, uh, bud budget cycle. And it's really important that our voices are all heard, educators, administrators, and that we partner with legislators so that we make sure that we can continue to do the good work that is so well highlighted here. I look forward to working with you, and I thank you for the time. Thank you, Donnie. Uh, uh, that is so important about, that's why I mentioned that uh, even with a 40, 40 percent, more than 40 percent increase in full-time faculty here at Bristol, we still suffer from 
uh, over reliant, I say suffer uh, for this reason that uh, over reliance on adjunct faculty. Uh, the adjuncts, don't get me wrong, the adjuncts are experts in their field. Some of you teach for us and you come in and bring uh, to the classroom the benefits of your, uh, of your expertise. Uh, we have uh, Representative Cazaro, for example, teaches uh, for us. Representative uh, John Lepper, uh, former Representative John Lepper, teaches government. I, I always tell John, please don't tell uh, the students how a bill becomes law uh, in your government class. Uh, but we have experts such as that uh, who come, uh, but I but, uh, think the point that Donnie and others are making is that they come and uh, they, uh, uh, they teach their course and then they have uh, jobs to go to and whatnot. Whereas a full-time faculty member is required, not that they uh, are made to do it because they want to do it, we have advising, uh, we have committee work, uh, other things outside the classroom that the full-time fa full faculty members uh, enrich our educational experience for our students. So that's the, uh, you know, that is really the key to uh, full-time uh, full faculty. Uh, we've made great strides, as you see, but it, it's still, uh, we have a, you know, a long, long way to go uh, for, uh, uh, for the numbers of full-time faculty and also for the numbers of full-time uh, academic, so, uh, academic and student support services. So those are very uh, crucial issues. You're gonna hear more and more about uh, these, uh, these issues, uh, I'm sure, uh, from, uh, from people. Uh, we um, uh, did want to uh, thank you for uh, coming. Uh, we have uh, uh, <clears throat> tours available. If someone would like to go on a tour, please let us know. Uh, and also, uh, we have, uh, you know, in the future, uh, I don't want to always uh, show of hands, but, uh, you know, if we did away with my presentation and had only students come in, I think you'd enjoy that uh, quite a bit. The stories are, are unbelievable, and I want to thank Stanley and, and uh, Kevin for what they have done. Also, um, uh, we have, uh, I, I have a request for you. If you would, um, uh, perhaps if you can, stay later. I would like to ask the student, uh, student senators and student ambassadors to stand uh, to be recognized. Uh, if they would, and the student senators, there they are. The student senators uh, would like to have a photo uh, opportunity with all of the legislators. If you could take a, just a minute uh, afterwards, and we'll be, uh, uh, we'll be very grateful to you for that. And I thank you very much for coming. Uh, anything that we can do to help you, we've asked a lot of uh, 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 you know, we are, we're asking a lot from you, but we, I want to leave you with the idea that we make available all of our resources to help you. And uh, anything that we can do to help you as you fulfill your uh, solemn obligation as an elected official, uh, we're certainly glad to, uh, uh, delighted to move uh, forward with you on that, okay? So I thank you all for coming, and uh, we'll be seeing each other in their, uh, private, in your private offices, I'm sure. Thank you very much. And if we could have a photo opportunity. Kevin, where would you like it, Kevin?